1975, everybody. Come on. Damn. So good at what you do. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Welcome back to Minneapolis. Thank you very much. It's your second show in like, what, four or five months, something like that? I think so. Yeah, something like that. I like that. Yeah. I like that you guys are here again. It's yeah, we like it. Yeah. We had a lot of fun. We've played everywhere. Yeah, I mean. Do I, did I hear a rumor that you got a tattoo here once when you came to Minneapolis? Yes, I got that. One. Oh, cool, thank you. I got that, like, we were doing this thing called the Tour Zoo, was it or something? Where we all had to get to here. Yeah. <laughs> we all had to get a tattoo of an animal. So everybody got a small one, like Ross got a penguin that got fucked up on his arm. And, and I got, um, that's not even an animal. I mean, there's dubs on it. Anyway, I got it, like, two hours before we went on stage somewhere. I know it sounds a lot more hardcore than I actually am. You got doves, though. Is that what you said? Yeah, I know. It's almost a Prince reference, but, um, but it's not. It was just, it was some dude's granddad's design. So it's a bit like haggard and gnarly, but it's quite, it's quite, um, I don't know. I, uh, I heard about that on Twitter because your fans are so dedicated. And anytime we play you on the radio or we give away tickets, um, our social media blows up. Ask about this, ask about that. When did, you, when did you kind of start to notice that your relationship with your fans was so strong and they were so dedicated to you? Well, I mean, quite early on, to be honest with you. I think that's why we kind of cultivated it so much or it became such a, just such a part of our identity. Like, when we were playing, you know, early, early days, we'd do, like, a show of 200 people and 100 would wait afterwards to meet us. Do you know what I mean? Like, the, 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 um, the cross-section of people at those shows was quite hardcore. There was like tattoos and shit in the early days, so it, it spoke of something that could potentially be, you know, like I said, cultivated, and that's kind of what it's turned into. Is there a particular thing that your fans sort of say to you, like the reason why they felt so passionate so early on? Is there some sort of a continuous thing that you, that you hear? Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, it's weird because um, it's... Yeah, I mean, you get you saved my life a lot, which is a difficult one because you've got no context, and it's and I kind of and I kind of know how that feels, but it starts to become a bit of a personal responsibility. Like at the moment, this is getting quite heavy, <laughs> um, but I mean, like for example, after every tour, I'll pretty much have to buy a suitcase for the letters that I get sure and they're normally quite emotional whether it be positive or slightly negative they're normally within the same kind of ball ballpark so then I find myself with not only my own metaphorical emotional baggage physically an em emotional baggage of other people so it starts to become what well, is my responsibility so I can't take it too personally I have to take it artistically and try and just give back musically because I couldn't for every kid that says you know that kind of thing I can't really process it to be honest with you growing up was there an artist or a musician that maybe you didn't feel that strongly about but maybe someone or a band who sort of influenced what you guys do today um was there one band there's a thousand bands I mean like I mean I was it, when I was very young it was just Michael Jackson that was my whole world like from like three to well, now, really, but I mean, the, that was my main thing. I kind of, I don't know if I related to him, but I just, I kind of got, I got why he, want, why he did what he did. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Like I mean, why he was the musician well, that think, he was? The or? story that I always tell is that I remember vividly, I would have been about five, all I used to do was watch videos of Michael Jackson, videos of Prince, videos of Michael Jackson. Um, on VHS, and I remember watching one with my dad's mates behind me, and my dad's kind of like a working class guy, so all his mates were like welders and stuff like that. And, and I remember them expressing how alien of a concept he was, like how he was almost from another planet. And I remember thinking, well, I'm a lot more like him than I'm like you. Do you sure. know what I mean? Yeah. Not, in a, not in an egomaniac kind of way, <laughs> but on a very primitive level, like I didn't, it didn't, I understand why he needed to dance that much and why he needed to connect with people. Like I kind of got that. 
Yeah, there's one thing about, about him and, and Prince, for that matter, too, being so different coming out. And I think about that with uh, some of the bands that are also from Manchester. I know you're from there as well. Uh, I don't hear any of the Smiths or Oasis in 1975 music, but one thing that I do find to be common is when they came out, they were very different. They well, that's were the whole point, isn't it? Right, exactly. So I kind of feel like maybe that was some of the influence that you got from that. Well, I don't know. I think Manchester, there's this kind of tribalism that's, that's born out of, out of ignorance because what, there's, there's all of these people that, I, I don't know, they dress like Liam Gallagher from Oasis or they look like Paul Weller and they, they have this, like, this tribal adherence to what Manchester is and what Manchester looks like and they're forgetting that the reason that those bands that they like were successful was because they sounded like nothing that preceded them. So we, we are, in essence, a more Manchester band than any band that sounds like the Smiths or sounds like Joy Division. It's like Peter Hook said about us. He likes the fact that we sound like Hall & Oates, but we're massively inspired by Joy Division. Because sure. you get bands like Interpol, even though I love them, and they're like, oh, we're inspired by Joy Division. It's like, yeah, you can fucking tell. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> right. So, um, so, yeah, I just don't, yeah. So I think Manchester has, is, a, is quite a progressive place musically, and it'll always be evolving. It's been a long tour for you already, right? Mm. I mean, the record's the last out. show. The last show of the tour, everyone. Mm. Come on, Minneapolis. Let's go. Second time on this album. How's the tour been? Long, like you said, yeah. It's been amazing. We've, we've covered some ground, but um, it's, been, it's, it's been great. I mean, it's weird for me because all of our fans experience our tours in a very compartmentalized world. We, we turn up, and then we're there, and then we go, and that's their time. But we're always on tour, and... You know, like when I go back to the UK, we land and then we go home for five hours and then the bus picks us up at midnight to take us to a show in the UK. So it all starts to become one kind of thing. So I try not to think about it like the end of the tour because I'd actually get quite nostalgic or maybe like a bit upset or a bit like, oh, you know, kind of holiday blues kind of thing. This isn't it though. I mean, this is it for this leg, but you'll this go out This is it for again. this leg. We are coming back. We haven't announced it, but we're coming back this year, like in the fall. Oh, fantastic. Mm. Good time. I mean, you're, the, you're the kind of band, 1975, who I notice when there's a tour, when there's a record, you're kind of working nonstop. I mean, do you have time to do anything else other than focus on the show and the music? Nope. <laughs> well, that's why you're so good at what you do. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I think it was a hobby before it was a profession, and it's still very loosely a profession. Sure. You know what I mean, so it, that'll always be the dynamic. It's something that we, that we would be doing even if it wasn't so kind of endorsed well thanks for coming into our go garage it's an honor for you to be here i mean thanks. we've had so much excitement for for months that this was going to happen